back with a quick video on five most important questions on surface areas and volumes. Uh, surface areas and volumes is an important lesson from your exam perspective in the sense that you can expect three to five questions from this lesson in your question paper. And also, a lot of you feel that this lesson is quite complicated because this lesson se bahut sare complex figures hote hain, jinke areas, volumes, vagera vagera nikale hote hain. So today I'm going to make it simple for you. Even if your preparation is not that great, you can blindly follow this video. Let's get started. Important topics in this lesson would include area, total surface area, curved surface area, volume of a sphere, hemisphere, cylinder, cone, frustum, etc. Therefore, it is important that all these formulae are at your fingertips. Few important formulae that should be at your fingertips while you are trying to solve questions on surface areas and volumes are curved surface area of a cylinder, total surface area of a cylinder, volume of a cylinder, Besides that, curved surface area, total surface area and volume of a cone, volume of a frustum, curved surface area of a frustum of a cone, total surface area of a frustum of a cone, volume of a sphere, curved surface area of a sphere. Besides that, other shapes like hemisphere, volume, curved surface area, total surface area. So all these things should be at your fingertips and I hope by now all of you know what's the difference between curved surface area and total surface area right so these are some of the things which are important besides that always expect to get questions where you will have combination of two shapes for example it could be a combination of a cylinder and a cone it could be a combination of a cone and a hemisphere and so on Question number one, a tent is in the shape of a cylinder surmounted by a conical top. So let us first draw the shape because that's the most important thing. So we have a tent which is in the form of a cylinder like this. And there is a cone which is surmounted on the top like this. So roughly this is how it looks like. If the height and diameter of the cylindrical part are 2.1 meter and 4 meters respectively. That means this height is 2.1 meters and this diameter is 4 meters. This is 4 meters. And the slant height of the top is 2.8 meters. So this is the slant height. This is equal to 2.8 meters. Find the area of the canvas used for making the tent. So how much cloth would you need to make this entire tent? So for that you need to find out the total area of this tent. Now here the area that we are talking about whether it is total surface area or curved surface area. So now if you look at the area which will be covered by the cloth that is going to be this area and this area which is the curved surface area because if we talk about total surface area we will also have to include the area of this circle but there we do not need a cloth right so we need the cloth only on the side surfaces so that means on the curved surface area so basically we can say that area of canvas would be equal to the curved surface area of the tent now curved surface area of the tent would mean curved surface area of the cone plus curved surface area of the cylinder. Correct? So now let's calculate this. Curved surface area of a cone is given by pi r l and curved surface area of a cylinder is given by 2 pi r h. Now all of these values are given here. If you take pi r common, you are left with l plus 2 h. Correct. So pi is 22 by 7. Radius is given as, so diameter is given as 4 meters. So radius would be 4 by 2. L that is slant height is given as 2.8 and height is given as 2.1. So now you can calculate and um, I'm not doing the detailed calculation, but when you calculate, you get this as 44 meters square. So this much is the area of the canvas. 
that i mean total area that needs to be covered by the canvas now we have to find out the cost of the canvas now the question says that the rate is rupees 500 per meter square that means for 1 meter square area the cost is rupees 500 therefore for 44 meter square the cost would be 500 multiplied by 44 which would be equal to rupees 22000 so this would be the cost of the tent Question number two, a solid is in the shape of a cone standing on a hemisphere. So this is a hemisphere like a bowl and on top of that we have a cone standing like this with both their radii being equal to one centimeter. So this radius is one centimeter and the height of the cone is equal to its radius. That means the height of the cone is also equal to one centimeter. Find the volume of the solid in terms of pi. We have to find out the total volume. Volume is like the entire space which is there inside. So it, this is very straightforward. So volume of the solid would be equal to the volume of the cone plus the volume of the hemisphere. Right. So how do we calculate volume of a cone? It is given by 1 by 3 pi r square h. And what about hemisphere? It is 2 by 3 pi r cube. So hemisphere is basically half of the sphere. So volume of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So volume of hemisphere is 2 by 3 pi r cube. So this would be equal to 1 by 3 pi r square which is common h plus 2 r. So now here we will not put the value of pi because here we need the answer in terms of pi. So this would be pi and radius is 1. So 1 square. H is also 1. So 1 plus 2 into 1. So this is going to be 1 by 3 pi into 3. So 3 and 3 will get cancelled. So this would be equal to pi cubic meter cubic units it could be meter cube or it, it, it's basically going to be centimeter cube because here it is given in centimeters so this is the answer sometimes you may get conceptual questions like this a wooden article was made by scooping out a hemisphere from each end of a solid cylinder as shown in the figure if the height of the cylinder is 10 cm and the base radius is 3.5 cm, find the total surface area of the article. So looking at this picture, if, we, if at all we have to find out the total surface area of this article, what would be the total surface area? So total surface area would be equal to the curved surface area that is this white surface area which you see outside. So that would be there. But besides that, it would also include the surface area, the curved surface area of these two hemispheres. Because when you look from top or when you look from bottom, so inside you will have that hemisphere, right? So that surface area will also get counted when we are trying to calculate the total surface area of this article, right? So if, if you did not get me right, please understand it again. Total surface area of this article would be this entire white surface like which is the surrounding and also when you look from the top you will have the surface the curved surface area of this hemisphere plus when you look from bottom the curved surface area of this hemisphere so the total surface area of this article would be two times the curved surface area of the hemispheres plus the curved surface area of the cylinder because this is a cylinder right so now let's calculate. So curved surface area of a hemisphere is given by 2 pi r square and curved surface area of a cylinder is given by 2 pi r h. So this would be equal to 2 pi r into 2 r plus h. So now if you know the values for radius and height, you can just put them and calculate. Frustum of a cone is a very important topic for your exams. Aapko kai baar frustum of a cone se related unke surface area ya volume se related questions pooche jate hain. Frustum ko yaad rakhne ka best example hai bucket, balti. 
वो होती है एक फ्रस्टम के शेप में तो एक एग्जाम्पल देखते हैं ऐसे क्वेश्चन का द स्लैंड हाइट ऑफ अ फ्रस्टम ऑफ अ कोन इज फोर सेंटीमीटर्स एंड द पेरीमीटर्स ऑफ इट सर्क्यूलर एंड आर एटीन सेंटीमीटर एंड सिक्स सेंटीमीटर फाइन द कर्व सर्फेस एरिया ऑफ द फ्रस्टम सो आई थिंक वी शुड ट्राई दिस आउट एट लीस्ट वंस नाउ सिंस वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ फ्रस्टम एंड वॉट इज अ फ्रस्टम सो लेट से इफ दिस इज अ कोन एंड इफ यू काइंड ऑफ कट इट फ्रॉम ह्यूर सो वॉट आर यू लेफ्ट विथ you are left with a frustum like this so it, it's like when you think of a frustum just think of an inverted bucket so mostly the bucket is in the shape of a frustum okay so now in this question it says the slant height of the frustum is 4 cm and the perimeters of its circular ends are 18 cm and 6 cm respectively so the perimeter is given that means this perimeter is given as 18 cm and this perimeter is given as 6 cm find the curved surface area of the frustum okay now if you look at this frustum so the curved surface area would be equal to pi l r1 plus r2 so that would be the curved surface area so in this case what would be r1 and r2 so that we can calculate from here so let us suppose if uh, this let's say this is r1 this corresponds to r2 so 2 pi r1 that is the circumference is given as 6 so r1 is equal to 6 by 2 pi here 2 pi r2 is given as 18 so r2 is equal to 18 by 2 pi so we can put these two values so this would be equal to pi into l r1 is equal to 6 by 2 pi and r2 is equal to 18 by 2 pi so this is equal to pi into l into 24 divided by 2 pi so pi and pi will get cancelled 2 into 12 so this will be equal to 12 into l so now we can put the value of l and that's how we can get the curved surface area moving ahead with question number 3 a solid iron pole consists of a cylinder of height 220 cm and base diameter 24 cm which is surmounted by another cylinder of height 60 cm and radius 8 cm so let us first draw the first cylinder which is somewhat like this The question says that this cylinder has a height of 220 cm and it has a base diameter of 24 cm. So on top of this there is another cylinder of height 60 cm and radius 8 cm. So that means for this particular cylinder this is like thinner than this one. So this is surmounted in this fashion. So height is 60 cm. and radius is 8 cm so these are the values given to us find the mass of the pole given that 1 cm cube of iron has approximately 8 grams so you look at this we have to find out the mass now in order to get the mass we need the volume because in the question it is given that 1 cm cube of volume weighs 8 grams so if we know the volume of this entire a uh, pole we will be able to easily calculate the mass right so the catch here is to calculate the volume of the pole so volume of this pole looking at this diagram you can say that it will be equal to volume of the top cylinder plus volume of the bottom cylinder and volume of a cylinder is given by pi r square h so pi r1 square h1 plus pi r2 square h2 so here r1 r2 and h1 h2 they are given so let us suppose if r1 is equal to so let let's say here h1 is equal to 220 cm h2 is equal to 60 cm in a similar way r1 is equal to 12 cm because 24 is the diameter so radius would be half of that and r2 is equal to 8 cm so you know these in these kind of questions they generally give diameter instead of radius just to confuse people because many a times out of hurry the children would actually use the value 24 for r1 so these are the values which are given and now you can straight away put these values and calculate the volume of the pole now once you know the volume of the pole then what happens now in the question it is given that 1 cm cube weighs 8 grams therefore whatever volume you calculate from here 
So that much centimeter cube will weigh that much volume multiplied by 8 grams. And this would be your answer. Question number 4. A container shaped like a right circular cylinder having diameter 12 cm and height 15 cm is full of ice cream. Now that's yummy. So let us suppose that this is the container. Now this container has a diameter of 12 cm and it has a height of 15 cm. So it is full of ice cream. Now this ice cream is to be filled into cones of height 12 cm. Cones like this. I think all of you can very easily visualize the ice cream cones. So they have height of 12 cm and diameter 6 cm. That means radius is 3 cm. And they have a hemispherical shape on the top like this. Correct? Now find the number of such cones which can be filled with ice cream. So basically we need multiple cones such that we can empty this cylindrical vessel. So quite easily understandable problem. So what does that mean? That basically means that the amount of ice cream which is there in this cylindrical vessel should be equal to the sum of the amounts of ice creams in all the cones. Correct. That actually means that the volume of the cylinder should be equal to the volume of all the cones. Correct. Now we have to find out the number of cones. Please remember. So what we will do is we will find out the volume of the cylinder. So that is something which we will do first. Then we will find out volume of one cone. Correct. Now once we know the volume of the cylinder and volume of one cone, you will see that we will very easily find out the number of cones. How? Let's see. Let's do it one by one. So volume of the cylinder would be pi r square h. Correct. So pi into 6 square into h that is 15 centimeter cube. What is volume of one cone? That will be equal to 1 by 3 pi r square h which is equal to 1 by 3 pi into r is 3 centimeter for the cone. So 3 square into 12 because height of the cone is 12. Correct. Now, not just the cone, actually we also need to find out the volume of this hemisphere so that for one ice cream cone, because the cone and the hemisphere together makes the ice cream cone. So volume of the hemisphere will be equal to 2 by 3 pi r cube. That is equal to 2 by 3 pi into 3 cube. Correct. So therefore, the total volume of the ice cream cone will be equal to volume of the cone plus volume of the hemisphere. That is 1 by 3 pi into 3 square that is 9 into 12 plus 2 by 3 pi into 3 cube that is 27. So this comes out to be 54 pi centimeter cube. So this is basically volume of one ice cream cone. This entire thing's volume is for 54 pi centimeter cube. Now at what, what we understand is if let us suppose that the number of ice cream cones is n. We do not know how many are there, but let us suppose that they are n. So n into volume of each ice cream cone. So volume of one ice cream cone will be equal to the volume of the cylinder. Correct? Because whatever volume is there in the cylinder, that has to fit into all the ice cream cones. So we are assuming that there are n ice cream cones. So n into volume of one ice cream cone will be equal to volume of the cylinder. So n will be equal to volume of the cylinder divided by the volume of ice cream cone. So this will be equal to pi into 6 square into 15 divided by 54 pi. So when you calculate this, it comes out to be 10. So we need 10 such ice cream cones to empty the cylinder completely. Question number 5. Water in a canal 5.4 meter wide and 1.8 meter deep is flowing with a speed of 25 km per hour. How much area will it irrigate in 40 minutes if 10 cm of standing water is needed? Now, this is an important question from exam perspective and many a times students even fail to understand which topic or which lesson is this question from. So let us understand this question very clearly because I have come across a lot of students who do not understand it. 
they just try to memorize the solution which is an absolutely incorrect method okay so we'll understand it this way so let's say this is a canal and the water is flowing through this canal and here this is 5.4 meter wide and the depth is let's say 1.8 meters and it is flowing with a speed of 25 kilometer per hour now we have to find out how much area will it irrigate in 40 minutes now first of all we we will try to see that in 40 minutes how much length will it cover correct so if we talk about that so we can say that in 40 minutes length that it would cover will be equal to the speed that is 25 multiplied by time because distance is equal to speed into time so speed into time which is 40 but you see time is in minutes but speed is in kilometer per hour so we need to make the changes so what we will do we will change this into hour so 40 by 60 so this comes out to be 50 by 3 kilometer so if we convert it into meters this becomes 50,000 divided by 3 meters so this is the length that would be covered by the water in 40 minutes okay now very logically try to understand this that the volume of water that would irrigate the land is equal to the volume of the water that would be flowing in 40 minutes right because that same water is going to irrigate the land so that actually means volume of water which irrigates the land is equal to volume of water flowing in 40 minutes so whatever volume is flowing out of the canal that only is used to irrigate the land right so the volume that is flowing out in 40 minutes that same volume is going to irrigate that land okay so how do we calculate volume of water which irrigates the land area it will irrigate multiplied by height of standing water correct so area that it will irrigate is something which we want to calculate in this question because that is not given and multiplied by height of standing water which is 10 centimeter so this would be equal to multiplied by 10 centimeter so if we have to convert it into meters it would be 10 by 100 meters now this will be equal to volume of water flowing in 40 minutes so how much volume of water will flow from the canal so width of the canal is given depth is given and length we have already calculated so volume of water would be length into breadth into height that is equal to 50,000 by 3 multiplied by 5.4 multiplied by 1.8 so now very easily we can calculate area that will be equal to 50,000 into 5.4 into 1.8 into 100 divided by 3 into 10 so once you calculate this, so I leave the calculation up to you because in this question, the more important part was to understand the concept. Like what is the concept we, you are, we are using to solve it, right? So here we are basically talking about areas and volumes, right? Now since we are talking about a river, a canal, so it's, it's like a cuboid. So length into breadth into height is giving us the volume. So it's very important that you understand the question very logically. So that even if you do not get the same question, but you get some other question, you will still be able to think logically. So do you want us to give it a try? So at least let me give you a hint. So I think the best hint that I can give you is draw the diagram. So here it says that we have a rectangular cardboard like this. And from this cardboard, two circular pieces of equal radii and maximum area. So maximum area actually means that, I mean, you cannot get a bigger circle than this out of this rectangular board. So this is how it would be. So two rectangular, two circular pieces of equal radii. That means all these radii are going to be the same. 
are taken out of this rectangular board. So this is 14 centimeter and this is 7 centimeter. So what would be the radius? The radius is going to be 3.5, 3.5, 3.5 and 3.5. So we have just done 14 divided by 4. So we get 3.5. Okay, so now we have to find out the area of the remaining cardboard. That means we basically need to find out these remaining areas. So I think it is pretty simple. All you need to do is first you find out the total area of the cardboard. So total area of the cardboard will be equal to the area of the rectangle. That is 14 into 7 centimeter square. Correct. Then you have to find out the area of two circles which will be equal to 2 into pi r square that is 3.5 whole square so with that you'll get the area of two circles therefore the remaining area would be equal to 14 into 7 that is area of the rectangle minus the area of the two circles and in that fashion you'll be able to calculate the area of the remaining cardboard now that you have looked at all the five important questions, it's time for a practice tip. So I would advise you to do some hands-on practice on these type of questions. So for that, you can go back to your NCRT textbook, exercise number 13.2 and 13.3. Each of these exercises have around nine questions. Do solve them. Besides that, you have some solved examples, close to six or seven solved examples. Take a look at them as well because they are also very important. So once you are done with all of these, I'm sure you'll master surface areas and volumes. For any questions, any queries, feel free to write it in the comment section. So I'll see you all very soon with a new video. All the very best.